Okay, so today we're going to talk about the cumulative and relative frequency uh, distributions. Now, the first one we're going to look at is the relative frequency distribution. The relative frequency distribution, well, in a relative frequency distribution, the frequency of the class from the frequency distribution, the one we have here is a frequency distribution, but we're going to place, we're going to replace the frequencies that we see here in this column, we're going to replace those frequencies with the ratio of the frequency of a specific class uh, to the sum of all these frequencies. So for instance, for this very first class, the frequency of this class, the class that goes from five to eight, the frequency of this class is three. So what we do is to create a relative frequency distribution. We're going to put the relative frequencies here. And the relative frequencies are simply for each class, the frequency of that particular class, for instance, three for this class, divided by the sum of all the frequencies. So we have to figure out what the sum of all the frequencies is. Remember this symbol here, the sigma? The sigma meant uh, to add them all up, right? And um, the sum of the frequencies would look like this. We just call F the frequencies. So the sum of all the frequencies is what I get when I add all these numbers in the frequency column. So it would be three plus four plus one plus five plus one plus one. And let's see, what's that sum? That's seven, eight, 13, 14, 15. So we have the sum of the frequencies to be 15. Now the sum of the frequencies, if you remember, is also just the number of data values that were in the original raw data set. So that's actually equal to N. Um, well, that would be if this were a sample, it would be uppercase N, of course, if this were a population. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through for each class and we're going to divide the frequency for that class by the sum of the frequencies, which is 15. So let's see, the first one is going to be 3 divided by 15. 3 divided by 15, well, that is the number 1 fifth. And as a decimal, we can write 1 fifth as 0.2. So we have our first relative frequency, and our first relative frequency is 0.2. Now we could also express that as a percentage. Um, there is a relationship between a decimal and a percentage. All right, so the next relative frequency is going to be 4 out of 15. All right, and 4 out of 15, we're going to do that division, and we get the frequency for this class. Well, that's an irreducible fraction, but the frequency for this class, I get to be 0.26, but this 6 is repeating. The 6 is a repeating 6. All right, so we have the frequency for that class, the relative frequency. For the next class, is going to be 1 out of 15 for the relative frequency. 1 out of 15, and let's convert that to a decimal. 1 out of 15 as a decimal is 0 0.06 repeating, 0 0.06. And the 6 is repeating, not the 06, just the 6. So we put a bar over the 6, so that's 0 0.06 repeating, or 0 0.0 with a repeating 6. All right, <laughs> the next one, is 5. So we'll have 5 out of 15. This is the relative frequency for this class, 5 out of 15. And we can actually reduce that. That reduces to 1 third. And 1 third as a decimal is 0.3 repeating. So that's 0.3 repeating. And the next one is also 1 out of 15. So we're going to record right here 1 the 15th, which is equal to 0 0.0 with a repeating 6 once again. And the last one is the same 
1 over 15, which is 0 0.0 with a repeating 6. 6 is the only number repeating there. Okay, so those would be the relative frequencies. The relative frequencies would be for the first class 0.2, that's 20%. For the second class 0.2, oops, okay, that's, uh, the decimal is actually here also. That's uh, 0.2 with a repeating six, only six repeating. Um, the third class is 0 0.0 with a repeating six. The fourth class is 0 0.3 repeating for its relative frequency. The fifth class is 0, 0.0 with a repeating 6 also, and so is the sixth class. So those would be the relative frequencies. Now let's talk about the cumulative frequency. All right, so the cumulative frequency, the cumulative frequency is pretty much a relative, sorry, a frequency distribution in which the frequencies are replaced by the sum of the frequency of that class and all previous classes. Well, let's see here. So we're going to do the cumulative frequencies. All right, so for the cumulative frequencies, let's see. So like I said, what we're going to do is we're going to take this class's frequency, the first class, and we're going to add it to all the frequencies of the pre that class and the previous class. Well, that just means I'm going to be adding three and nothing else because there are no previous classes there. All right, so for the next class, I'm going to take that class's frequency, four, and I'm going to add it to the previous class's frequencies. So that's four plus three. And four plus three would give me a cumulative frequency of this in this class of seven. The next class's cumulative frequency is one, which is this class's frequency, plus, well, it's plus the four and the three, which amounted to seven. So it's really one plus seven, which is eight. And the frequency for the next class, the cumulative frequency is going to be five plus. And it's going to be 5 plus the sum of the frequencies for all the other classes, which is 8. So the cumulative frequency here is 13. The cumulative frequency for the next class is 1 plus, well, 1 plus 13, the cumulative frequency from the previous class, 14. And the final uh, class is 1 plus 14. And if you notice, the cumulative frequency for the final class should equal the sum of the frequencies, or n, which is 15. So this is the cumulative frequency distribution for this data set. And these circled numbers here are the cumulative frequencies uh, for each of those classes.